everybody, Zach again at NewTutorial.com coming and making a video for you today. You know, I just made a video the other day about honey and is it kosher and you know, people out there in Facebook and internet land and they're all, they're making all these claims that honey isn't kosher, it's bee vomit and that when you read about honey in the Bible, it's saying it's really actually date honey or it's cane sugar or it's tree sap or it's fruit juice. That is a bunch of garbage. And I make the point in that video that if you'd ever just get out of your apartment complex once in a while, if you got out of the city once in a while, you would see that honey and bees actually come from trees. They live in the trees. And I made the point that every once in a while we do find a tree around here with a honey beehive in it. And we have found that today. Uh, my, my son and you know, my kids were out running around with their friends around our land the other day and it was a warmer day, around 50 degrees, and it was a, as they were running around they, just, they spotted a tree with a whole bunch of honeybee activity around it. And they came back and they told me. And then so the next day it was colder and so we came out and sure enough we looked inside the hole which is right here and lots of honeycomb and honeybees. Now it's way too cold right now for them to be out and about so we're safe. You know, but it's like uh, like 20 degrees right now. So it's really cold outside. But in there, they're staying warm and they're eating all of the honey that they produced the year before. And so there's lots of honeybee activity. I'll give you a close up in just a second. But in the Bible, in the book of Samuel, where it talks about Jonathan and him, them coming to a forest and Jonathan takes his staff and sticks it into the honey that has come from a tree and is laying on the ground. He breaks his father's oath, if you remember that Bible story, and then he tastes the honey. Okay, and people will say, Zach, that was tree sap, or Zach, that was some kind of cane syrup or fruit juice. No, it wasn't. Tree sap is not sweet, okay? I have harvested maple syrup from some of the trees down actually on this hill, and it takes hours upon hours upon hours of boiling that tree sap to make it sweet. Sap from a tree does not taste sweet at all. In fact, if you take a glass of it and drink it, it tastes just like water. This, however, Many times when bees put their nest into dead trees, just like you see here, this tree is completely dead, the wind will blow the tree and then will crack the honeycomb inside the tree and then the honey will seep out onto the ground and flow onto the ground. And that's what Jonathan discovered when they came to the forest in your Bible story in the book of Samuel. Amazing! The Bible comes alive! See, this is why I tell people that you need to get out of the city, you need to experience agriculture, you need to see, experience the creation of our Father, because you're never going to understand the writings of the Bible completely until you get out and you see and experience some things. Inside here is an amazing hive, and there's probably a lot of honey. Let's go take a look. Now it's hard for me to get a good close-up on this. Uh, but you may be able to see a few of the bees down there. You can definitely see the honeycomb. Let me lift this up here. You see all the honeycomb inside that hole? That's a lot of honeycomb. I've got the camera positioned just in such a way where the light from the sun is hitting on that comb inside there. And you can maybe see a few of the bees down there in the middle of your screen. They're moving around. It's really cold outside right now, so they're not really keen about coming out and saying hello. If it was warmer, they'd probably be stinging me like crazy. But there is a bunch of comb in there. Many, many layers of comb that I can see. It's hard to get it on camera, but there is a lot of honey. Now, these top things here, oh, he's a little active. These top uh, comb, they're empty. Like they, maybe it once was filled with honey, and then now they've eaten it all for the winter, and they're working their way down or up the tree to get more honey. But this is an active hive found in the forest the way bees are naturally created to live. Amazing. So there you go, there's a honey tree, the way it was created to be. Now I was talking with doubly blessed homestead, uh, Michael Leger and his family, and they raise bees, and he was giving me some advice on what we could do with this hive now that we have found it. Now in the pioneering days, they would have just taken this tree, probably cut it down, harvested whatever honey they wanted out of it, and then you know they find the next tree next year or another tree next year. And there are lots of these trees out in the forest. Uh, you just gotta find them and spend some time out here. We come across them pretty, pretty often. So, or at least every so often. And um, so, but I, the better option would be to go ahead and try to harvest the swarm. This hive will probably swarm in the springtime and you can set up a swarm box over there and try to catch that and then migrate that swarm to uh, a hive. 
box. I don't have any honeybee hives on this homestead. Uh, my neighbor does. Uh, we process sugar when it comes to like, you know, cane sugar and things like that. But as far as honeybees, we don't do that. Um, just never really, it's another, just one more thing I, I don't need to do in my life, right? I got plenty of other things to do. So my neighbor does that. So if we can harvest the swarm in the spring, we'll take this hive and or that swarm and then put, add it to one, some of his hives and then he can, you know, go with it from there and maybe we can share some honey that way. Uh, but uh, in the pioneering days, they would just normally, or the, um, the American Indian, when he would come across trees like this, they would, you know, break the tree down or cut the tree open, take whatever honey they could harvest and then... Um, move on and find the next tree. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this drives the point home that honey is in fact kosher. It is what is being spoken of in the Bible when you come across trees like this, just like Jonathan did. This is the honey spoken of in the Bible. It's mentioned 56 times in your scriptures. And you know, it just takes some understanding. You know, get out there and have some livestock or have some chickens or grow a garden or just get out there and walk in the woods for a while and enjoy and experience some of the Father's creation and so much of the Bible will open up to you. All right, guys, we'll leave it at that. Go home, read your Bible. Thanks.